Hey guys, welcome to another eBay repair video. This time I have an original Xbox that fails to power on uh, whatsoever. Pressing the eject or power buttons uh, does absolutely nothing. Uh, the old previous owner said that it was working fine one day and then he tried turning it on again and he had no power problem. So I'm going to take a look at this and show you how I figure out what the problem is and how to fix it. Generally speaking, if you're having powering issues with your device, you should probably check the power supply first. So I'm going to take that out and give it a good look. Okay, so here's our power supply. Uh, the first thing I would check is uh, on top of the board. Check the capacitors. These are these objects here. Uh, check if any of them are, you know, an interesting shape or discoloration at the top. See how the top, how they're completely flat? Uh, that indicates that they're probably in good health. And I'm looking over at the top of the board and it doesn't seem like there's anything of note. Okay? Everything checks out. Uh, the next thing we're going to probably want to check is underneath the board, underneath the power connector. This is where you plug the power supply uh, into the wall socket. And these are two solder joints here that occasionally I've heard can become cracked or just can completely break off uh, due to some kind of manufacturing uh, uh, mistake. They're just very weak sometimes and they can break. Uh, Microsoft actually issued a replacement power cord that included a circuit breaker. Just in case this broke off, uh, there was a chance that it can cause uh, some kind of electrical short and possibly start a fire. So <laughs> that's probably something you want to check first to make sure you're not going to burn your house down. But these look intact. They don't look cracked or anything like that. The bottom of the board looks clean. Everything looks like it's it checks out. So now we're going to turn our attention towards the motherboard and check anything over there. Okay, so here's our motherboard. Uh, we should probably identify the version of the motherboard and it's a 1.6 as indicated by the Excalibur chip at the top and I would also try to look at where the clock capacitor is located but since this is a 1.6 the clock capacitor uh, has no danger of leaking and destroying the board so I'm not interested in that whole board itself looks very clean uh, very very good condition uh, except for the bottom right corner, uh, I noticed near the motherboard power connector a bunch of capacitors are standing around and they all seem to be oddly shaped. One of them very clearly has some fluid leaking out on the top right there and the others are all conical shaped. If you look at the other capacitors to the left, you'll notice that they're very flat at the top and very clean and the ones on the right are bulging. Uh, if they're bulging at the top or the sides it's a very very good indicator that the capacitors have blown out and need to be replaced. Now in order to replace them uh, you have to keep two numbers in mind uh, in order to replace them safely and these two numbers are located on each capacitor that you're going to be replacing. If you look closely uh, one of the numbers uh, says 6.3 volts and that number represents the maximum voltage that the capacitor will be able to handle uh, before uh, compromising itself. So any th we have to look for replacement capacitors that are at least 6.3 volts. It could be higher but it definitely can't be less than that. The second number would be 3300 microfarads and that we have to make sure that we get the uh, replacement capacitors of the exact same amount. It has to be rated at 3300 microfarads or as I'm told as close to it as possible. Alright, to replace the capacitors you're definitely going to need one of these. You need a soldering iron and you need some solder. You'll need some solder to uh, Put the new components on and maybe you might need some of this it's a desoldering braid in case you make a mistake or you need help getting some of this uh, solder off the original capacitors you can use this to soak up all that extra solder and get them out one very important thing that i forgot to mention is that each capacitor 
has a positive and negative lead. And the negative lead is indicated on the side, you can see in the picture. Uh, so that means the other, the other end is positive. And the positive end is going to be the one that's a little bit longer. There is also a plus symbol located on the motherboard itself where you're going to be inserting the, the new capacitor. So it's kind of difficult to mess up, but it's vital nonetheless. Okay, so this part's kind of going to be annoying. Uh, I'm going to try and position the motherboard uh, on its side. And with my left hand, I'm going to hold on to the capacitors themselves. First, I'm going to locate the other end on the bottom of the motherboard. And on my left hand, I'm going to hold the capacitor in place with my fingers. And on my right hand, I'm going to have my soldering iron. And I'm going to try and heat both uh, leads at the same time. And once they're both melting a little bit, I can try and wiggle the capacitor with my left hand and slowly wiggle it out and do that with the rest of the other four capacitors. This part's kind of boring and I kind of sucked when it comes to filming it. Uh, but one really big mistake that I recommend you avoid is do not use a very thin soldering iron tip like you see right now. It has very poor surface area and it takes a lot of effort to heat up the board with it. I ended up switching to a soldering iron tip that had a little bit more surface area, was a little bit flatter at the end, at the, uh, at the very tip. And I was able to remove the components a lot faster, a lot easier. So I recommend you do that. Okay, so that was a lot harder than I thought. Finally got all of them out, all five. And now the next step is to pick up these replacements and start putting them in. Okay, once you fit the positive and negative leads uh, through the motherboard, flip it upside down and bend each lead uh, 90 degrees. This will keep the capacitor flush against the board and it'll make sure that they don't move around while you're trying to handle it. So this is actually the easy part. All you gotta do is heat the joint itself a little bit before you wanna join it and slowly feed the solder into the joint. And if it's hot enough, the solder should flow freely into the spot that you want and it'll, you'll create a good connection. Here's another angle showing my technique. Uh, this is the second capacitor that I put in. I realized very quickly that it was important that I heated the joint before I put in any kind of solder and of course using uh, as much flux as possible. That'll make sure the bonds uh, happen pretty quickly and without any trouble. So just slowly feed the solder in. As it melts, it should flow right into the spot, creating a nice connection. And once that's done, you can slowly twist the excess lead until it breaks off, and then you're done. Okay, so here's my finished product. Looks pretty neat, pretty good. I cleaned the underside already with some isopropyl alcohol to get rid of some of the flux residue that I used. And now the only thing left to do is to test it. So I'm going to put this back in the case, uh, connect it to the power supply, and then we'll see what happens next. Okay guys, I'm kind of scared. I've never done this repair before and I really, really hope it works. Ready? And... Here we go. Another day, another Xbox fixed. Look at that fan go. I did it. So that's that's pretty much what it takes to replace the capacitors and fix your no power problem in the original Xbox. I'm gonna hook up some video cables to this and check out what's going on uh, on the dashboard. So let's do something that I always love doing and that's going into the hard drive and checking out what previous saves that the previous owner had on it. So we got some 007. Let's see, last time he saved it was in 2004. This was a nice summer game, I see. 007, very nice. Some black, wow, this save file is from November 2001. Burger King, of course, classic, classic game. You know, definitely gonna be remembered for a long time. One of the Xbox's best uh, games right there. We got Halo, of course. 2000. I don't see any saves past like 2004. 
It looks like someone just... Oh, there you go, 2005. 2005. We got some good saves here. So this... This is kind of cool. This is probably... I don't know, I think it was the same month that the Xbox came out. So this is probably... I think the Xbox was released, this guy bought it, and then immediately played X-Men Legends. November 2001. It's amazing. Alright guys, enough messing around. You saw how to fix the no power issue. It can happen on a 1.6 or 1.0. I'm really not sure which ones are more likely to have the problem, but that's how you fix it. Hope you enjoyed watching it. Hope you learned something. See you later.